Welcome to SpecView Secrets, the video tutorial series that helps you use SpecView human machine interface software with Watlow products. In this installment, you will learn how to add and format fields, add labels, add increment and decrement buttons, and add bar graphs. In this session, we use SpecView with a configuration that was previously created by automatically detecting an EasyZone RM controller. If you've used this installation of SpecView before, when you launch it, SpecView will automatically prepare to open the last configuration you worked with, but it pauses at the Configurations Found dialog to allow you to make another choice. Click Stop Countdown to give yourself some time to look at the options. On the left is a list of all the existing configurations. Many of these are samples that came with SpecView, and any configurations you have created also appear in the list. Select the configuration you want to work with and click Go Online Now. This configuration only has the Graphical Display Window, or GDW, that was created by Auto Detection. To customize the configuration, from the File menu choose Configuration Mode, and SpecView opens the GDW in the editor. During Auto Detection, SpecView added several instrument views to the GDW. When you add items to a GDW, SpecView puts them in the upper left corner, so the first thing to do is move the instrument views out of the way. Just click and drag them. To add a field that displays a parameter value on the GDW, click the button with the red V which opens the variables list. The variables list includes all the instruments that are in the configuration. Click the plus symbol next to the instrument to access the parameters or variables it contains. When configurations are created with auto detection, the instruments are named like those seen here. For example, C9 EZ1 Controller 2 contains the parameters for the second control loop. In an EZ Zone controller with address 1 that communicates with SpecView via COM port 9. Most likely, you can come up with names that will make more sense to your operators. Let's change the name of the first control loop, select it, and click Properties, or just double-click it. Enter the new name in the Add Rename Instrument dialog and click Rename Only. Now let's add a field that shows the process value for control loop 1. Double-click it to add it to the GDW. Press the G key on the keyboard to group the field and label. Now you can move them around together. Press the U key to ungroup them if you want to format or make other changes to them. To change the label, double click it and edit it in the text attributes dialog. You can also change the font, style, size, and color of the text here. The three X's indicate where the variable's value is displayed. Double-click it to change its style. After formatting them, you may want to group the field and label together again. Click and drag to select them and press the G key. You can add fields for any variables the operators need, but keep in mind that the fewer items a GDW displays, the faster it will open and update, and the easier it will be for the operator to find what he or she is looking for. Using buttons to increment and decrement the control loop set point can make it easier for operators than having to enter a numeric value on the keyboard. To do this, we will use a SpecView user variable to add or subtract from the set point. In the variable list, click Show New to see the list of all the drivers that contain items you can manually add to a configuration. Expand SpecView Variables, select Integer, and click Add Item. Give it a name and click OK. Set its value to 1. Click Show Defined to view the list of defined variables. 
Now if you look under spec view, user variables, and integer, you see the new variable there. To add buttons to increment and decrement the control loop set point, select the button tool and click and drag where you want a button. Don't worry about being precise, you can adjust the size and position of the button later. Right click to drop the button tool and get the pointer tool back. Double click the button you drew to open the button attributes dialog. Enter a new caption or select bitmap and browse to locate a graphic for the button. I made these graphics in a basic paint program and saved them as BMP files. Under Action, choose Parameters Math Function and set it to copy from Controller 1's closed loop set point. Add our user variable 1. and copy to controller 1's closed loop set point. So every time the operator clicks the button, SpecView will take the current value of the set point, add 1 to it, and set the set point to the new value. Click OK, and you see the button has the up arrow we selected. You can go through the same process to create a down button, but it's easier just to copy the first button and modify the copy. Select the button, copy and paste it. The copy is created on top of the original. Drag it over, double click it, and make the changes. Change the caption or the graphic. And change the math function from add to subtract. Click OK. Now operators have a convenient way to make small set point adjustments. Let's give them a way to see the value with a bar chart. Select the bar chart tool and click and drag to draw a bar chart on the screen. Set the scale to appear on the left side and show the value on the bar. Set the top and bottom values appropriately for the application and choose set point in the variable list by double clicking it. You may have to adjust the size of the bar chart to allow room for both the bar and the scale. Let's save the GDW and check our work. Click the Save button and the Run button. SpecView establishes communications with the controllers and populates the fields and other controls on the GDW with values. When you click the Up button, the set point increases. the down button decreases it. After you've tried everything, you will likely want to make improvements. Let's make it clear that the buttons and the bar chart are related to the set point. From the file menu, choose configuration mode to go back to the GDW editor and make changes. Drag the buttons over next to the bar chart. To add a label, select the text tool and click the screen. Type set point Set the formatting and click OK. Right click to drop the text tool and drag the text to where you want it. Save your changes and run the configuration to see the results. Now that you've seen the basics of adding and formatting text, fields, buttons, and bar charts, you're on your way to creating useful and easy to use SpecView configurations. We hope you found this installment of SpecView Secrets helpful. We explore additional topics in other installments.